Hello and welcome to the first of many Action Game Maker tutorials. In this video, we're going to catch you up to what Action Game Maker is if you have no idea, and then we're going to dive into the early beta version and show you around. So with that said, let's get started. All right, first things first. If you happen to be new to the Maker series, this engine is being produced by Gotcha Gotcha Games. They made the popular RPG Maker series as well as the Pixel Game Maker series. So Action Game Maker is a successor to the Pixel Game Maker series. And what that engine was focused on is it was focused on side view games as well as top down games more like Zelda, where you could have more action combat and things like this. Now, one thing that it did very cool is that it had this visual scripting method that you didn't have to be a programmer to make pretty complex systems. All right. And you use tiles just like you would in RPG Maker and things like this but the visual scripting was pretty unique. Another thing that PGM did successfully is they introduced a Nintendo Switch export. And so you can see here a list of games that were exported onto the Nintendo Switch from PGM. That was one cool thing that they accomplished. So this leads to Action Game Maker. This is the successor to Pixel Game Maker. So you can see just by the visuals, there's a lot of cool things like shaders, there's also things like lighting access now, which PGM didn't have a very good lighting system. And you can see that the visual scripting is still intact. Now, if you're a Godot user, you can kind of see some Godot visuals. And that is because this game engine, Action Game Maker, is being built on top of Godot game engine. Now, this has been a free open source engine for several years now. And you can see some of the games that has been made with this engine. So Action Game Maker is being built on top of this engine so that we can utilize anything that Godot can. However, there is a caveat here, and that is that Action Game Maker is primarily focused on 2D. So most of these things that make visual scripting easy is going to be accessible only for the 2D nodes and not the 3D nodes. You can still use 3D nodes, but the scripting is primarily set up for 2D. So if you wanted visual scripting, won't have 3D access. There might be a caveat that they might do it later, but for right now we're, we're in this uh, 2D mode. All right, so that leads us into actually diving in and getting a first look at Action Game Maker. So I'm gonna click on this and it's gonna bring up a project hub, All right? So if you don't have any projects, you're gonna get this little welcome message and it will just kind of guide you to the thing. You can click on tutorial videos, but there's no videos on there yet. And you can click okay to get started. Now, if you want to see where your path is going, it's going right here, Documents Action Game Maker. You can change that path if you want. Otherwise, you can just name the project and just click Edit and Create. Now, if this, this is your first time creating the project, it will take a little time to load because there is quite a bit of sound effects that come with this, uh, probably over 150 audio files. And so that's I, primarily what I think takes the longest. But yeah, it, it will just load and I'll be back when it loads up. All right, so the project loaded up. It took about a minute, so it actually wasn't as long as I thought. But you can see that this is very Godot looking right here. We have a couple things right off the bat. We can see that we have a database option right here. We have a scene transition option right here. If you click on new, you can see that we have game scene, menu scene, game objects. These are unique to Action Game Maker, for example. Matter of fact, if you're ever wondering what is Action Game Maker node versus a regular Godot node, you're looking for these icons over here. If they are blue and orange, then that is going to be an Action Game Maker node. So I'll go through them real quick so you can see what will load when you click on them. You can see that your game scene comes with a main node, which you can set like a camera list right here in gravity. You've got your scene layers, which you can expand or minimize. And they come with certain things like parallaxing with a sprite. You see your object root nodes. These are where your objects will be on each different kind of layer. So these are just different layers as you would consider them in Pixel Game Maker. You also got a tile set that you can use and they kind of populate these. I'm sure you can make more, but they, these are just what you get populated when you first create them. You also get a post effects layer as well as a UI and cameras, All right? So I'll just kind of show that off right there. The next one let's go over is the uh, menu scene. Pretty simple, it just comes with a canvas and then the UI object root. So this is where you would start importing your objects or instantiating. What I mean by that is you can just click on this root, right click and click instantiate scene here. You can find a scene, let's just type in UI, see if they've got anyone, a coin counter. All right, boom. Now you've got a coin counter 
on your UIC. I'm gonna delete that for now. Now let's go to the game object. Now we do know this from Pixel Game Maker in the objects tab. This is where we would make our objects. Now you can just make them here. You can give it a name, just a test, and then you can say what kind of an object it is. Now, right now, this is an empty object. But you can make a character. Now, in Pixel Game Maker, we didn't have access to this. They were all one object was the same, basically. And then you took nodes and put them onto objects to, to expand them or minimize them. But each one came as if it could be a character. These ones are not the same way. You can now have a minimal, a more minimal object, like a bullet that is only interested in detecting things, and it won't come with things that the character object would come with. And then you can also do other things like just normal map objects that don't need any physics and things like this at all. Now, these are work in progresses. So for right now, the character one is available for us to do. And so we could see that if we set this to a player, we can make this be a movable object with input, all right? And also add a light occluder node. Now this is what's going to dictate shadows, I don't want to get too much into that. Now, these might look familiar for Pixel Game Maker users. These are the collision layers. Again, we'll get into that later. But if you create this right here, real quickly, just at the base level, you can see that you come with a collision shape. And then you have your base settings. Pixel Game Maker will be very familiar with these base settings. Move and jump settings. Your variables. You'll be able to see all of them right here. You can click on one and you can see what the name is and what the set value is. Now, again, these are subject to change. This is all beta, right? So these could have a cool window that pops up, which I'll, I'll show you how they've improved the actions, for example. So I'm not saying they will. This is, again, this is just the beta. And then switch settings are the same way. You get an array, a list of switches that you can see what is called from right here. Okay, so real quickly, Let's just say that in Pixel Game Maker, you wanted to add connections, like you wanted to add other objects that were connected. Well, you could simply right click here and click add a child, and then you can just try to search if there's anything like PGM on there. So connection, and you have connection settings. So these are gonna be the connection settings that you can set. And before I get too far into this, let's just, just say that, that you can set objects. Now, let's say that you wanted to add bullets to your object here you would look for bullet settings. Let's say that the object was a child and you wanted to give it some child settings. You would give it child settings. All right, so now let's move on to scripting. Let's just dive in a little bit, see what that looks like. You can right click a uh, owner node and you can click on attach script. Now, visual scripting is gonna be auto-populated, but you also have access to normal GD script. So if you're a Godot user, you have complete access to normal Godot methods. So visual script right here, I'm gonna click create. And then you can see right here, we have the action and a grid, okay? Where you set up your visual scripting. Got a minimap right here that you can now move. You can turn that minimap off right here or not. And one cool thing is that when you add an action, another action like that, you can now select everything and move it all together. You cannot do that in Pixel Game Maker, I'm pretty sure. You can only do one at a time. So let's just say that we want a link. We can add a link right here and then boom, we have a link. This any state is called a, or is, was referred to as the common actions in Pixel Game Maker. So if you have an action that would go from any action, then you would set it up right here. So now real quick, I just wanna show you how the actions and the conditions work. You can now click on an action that you want. You can go over here, you can see this is where you set your animations. This is where the actions like jump was. If you're familiar with Pixel Game Maker, this is gonna sound very familiar. And then you have other actions right here. So if you click on this, you can add a resource, and this is where you can add a action that you wanna do. The cool thing is we can now filter by name, so we could just start typing display text, and we'll be able to show display text. We'll be able to type in the text now, just like this. There's no more text resources. And those of you that come from Pixel Game Maker, you can just write, hey, how's it going? And that will be your text. There's also an interesting, option right here, which I need to test more, flag auto translation. So I'm curious what that is. But yeah, then you, real simply, you just click add. Now, when you do this, you will be able to have this right here. If you add another one, let's just add another one. You can move them around like this and it will move them around. You can also do some cool things like you can come down here and you can actually save it. And if you save it, you can then reuse it for another one. There's a way to remove it. Like right down here, you can clear it. 
And then right here, you could actually go like this and do a quick load and you could load it. So if you've saved it, you can load it. So if you have an action that you use all the time, like, I don't know, a weight of 0 0.01, which was pretty common for me in Pixel Game Maker, I can now save that weight 0.1 and now use that constantly as my thing. All right now, the same goes with conditions. You basically click on a link here. You have all your things right here. This is your satisfy all, any of, that kind of thing. You have your inputs. And in order to do that, you just add a new input. You can do required key. Here's your list of keys. And then here's where you can do your moment pressed with your acceptable frames. And if you go to other conditions, you can start to add all the existing ones from PGM. There might be a few new ones actually too that I noticed. But anyway, for right now, yeah, so receiving signals. It actually, Action Game Maker will utilize signals just like Godot users are used to. Now, more on that later, but just note that there are some new cool additions to the conditions and actions. All right, so then you just add them all just like that. One thing that I will, I do want to note this is let's just say contact wall detection. And then the next one that you add, you will need to specify whether it's an and or an or. So for currently right now, this is where you would specify if it's an and or an or. Pixel Game Maker, it kind of showed right here, but instead you're going to have to be picturing it like this. Okay. Now, if you do want to edit this, you can just click right here and this is where you would edit it. Just real quickly, you would, you would edit that condition. Same with the actions. But now with input, let's go over how to add input, especially with Godot. Basically, the way Godot does input is you go to project settings and then you go to input maps. I turn off the built-in ones usually, but you can see that you have some preset ones. So when it was saying that we had access to A, B, X, Y, and the arrows, that's because they added them. And it's literally as easy as adding this R1. You hit enter, it adds it. You go down here. And you click add and then you press it on your gamepad or your keyboard let's just say a p for this case and boom it will add it and now when you close and you might have to refresh this one actually let's see nope it adds it right away so now you'd have access to r1 so once again that's just generally how these objects work and how these create new works i don't know if there'll be more added or if, or if they'll have a different kind of menu for loading them but yeah and by the way, on these things, you can add anything you want. Again, you can add 3D nodes or you can add 2D nodes. Let's get out of here. You can see that I have access to 2D nodes, 3D nodes, control nodes. You can add them all on these kind of objects. So one more thing to show is the scene transition. This is where you'll have the scenes. You basically, when you have a new scene, you drag it out here and then you can link your other scenes together. Now let's go to a couple more things that are just gonna be awesome regarding Action Game Maker. The first one is that you have access to shortcuts as well as themes. So if you go to the editor settings, you can set up a theme. There's some really cool themes actually that make it look more like a Blender-like experience if that's what you really want. I personally prefer the Godot experience, but I do like it to follow my system's dark mode per se. Now you can also set shortcuts like this. So you can search them as well. So if you have one that you like, like hold all the lines, I use Godot. Uh, type code. So I definitely like to have these on uh, shortcuts right here. So anyway, that's one really cool thing that comes with Action Game Maker because of Godot. The other thing I'll show is in the project settings. This is where you set up your window right here. So you can set up your window size right here. And then down here is where you'd set up your scale. Okay, so it's a little different than Pixel Game Maker. And I'll have another video more heavily focused on exactly how this works. But just note that this is where you'll set your width. And then you'll come down here to actually set the scale of the game as far as the viewport goes, okay? the initial one anyway. Now, one important thing that everyone's going to need to kind of know right off the bat, is you're going to have to come down to rendering textures. And you're going to have to set this, and it actually looks like they do it by default with Action Game Maker. But yes, if this is not set to nearest, make sure that this is set to nearest, because this is going to be more for what you want for pixel art. Now, if you're using bigger digital assets, you might come in and set it to linear or something like that. Most users that I knew were pixel artists. Okay, so the last thing that I would just wanna show you guys here is that they have a open database button here. If you click on that, you can imagine that a database is gonna pop up. Now, this is the traditional database that we knew from Godot where you set a database name 
and then the variable names that you want it to be associated with, and then the value that you want to associate with. And then in your actions, you can use it to kind of manipulate data. It looks like they're giving this as a saveable now, so this might be able to get and set, which would be really cool. Not sure though. The other things too is we have some different things here. We have some data uh, database for types. We have attributes, which we did know from Pixel Game Maker. We also have equipment type now. And then here is the equipment database that you can now record. Here's an enchantment database with rarity database, prefix, suffix, and strength values. So these are all going to have to be dove into. Now here's our audio. This is pretty interesting. Um, the setup's a little different than Pixel Game Maker, and it, it feels a little more limited at the moment. I do not know if they're going, you know, what their plan is for the beta. For example, I do want to show this real quick. If you go to the visual scripting, this when you clicked add, it never used to show this. So this is actually new for the current closed beta people that are coming in. And so this was actually a huge improvement where you can actually type to find these actions and conditions. So if there anything like this going on with the database and things, I have some faith that things will look a little more better and be more practical like PGM was. But just in case, this is just how it is right now. You set the name that you call it, then you import the resource. I like this bulk set right here. What I think is, and I need to test this more, is I think that if you have them located in these certain areas, specifically like the um, the folders for uh, sounds, you might be able to specify. And then I think it will bulk import them. Now, don't quote me on that. I'll, I'll have videos on that if that is the case. You can come down here and you can add one and you can uh, set it. Or BGM voice SE, and you can set it just like that. So, yep, that's your audio database. And then, of course, you have your pro project variables and your project switches. Now, one thing that is noticeable right off the bat is is savable was checked by default on these. So, I will uh, see if we need that or not and see if we can get that changed. And I guess on my way out of this video, I will show you. How to play test because that would be important too. I'm just going to close all of these things that I created here and we're going to go back to the game scene. This is the default one right here where you're using this uh, skeleton based character and then you just click this or you can hit F5 and it will start to play your game and you can see this is a little bit of how it looks. So you can run and walk and he's falling off the slopes right now. I do know a fix for that but that will be another video. So hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. I'll also have a link to the Steam forums as well as my Discord where I will be taking specific questions related to Action Game Maker Beta. I know there is a plethora of Discords out there, but I want to keep myself streamlined and focused during this beta to help make the best game engine possible. So with that said, I will see you at the next video.